What is up you guys? It is your host Galadon, another Clash of Clans video, and today we are talking about something other than Electro Dragons. Go figure, you guys. So yes, I wanted to get into some three-star war attack strategies at Town Halls 12, 11, and 10 that are not involving Electro Dragons. Believe it or not, you guys, the Queen Walk is alive and well. Yes, we're seeing that at Town Hall 12, Town Hall 11. In fact, I would have to say that right now, Electro Dragons are really by far the minority simply because so few players have brought them all the way to level 3. There are much more reliable attacks out there for War 3 stars like Queen Walk Bitch. Queen Walk Bitch. Queen Walk Bow Witch with bowlers and witches following after the Queen Walk. The funneling taking place early, and there you can see in comes the Wall Wrecker. Very key in these attacks. This helps out a lot, helps grind its way in towards the core, and it makes sure that those bowlers get in and clear out the core of the bases. This is Reaper from LP2 Ares. We will be featuring attacks today from different clan members from different clans in the lost phoenix family if you guys are interested check out these clans we have everything from farming to serious war to casual okay i don't know if there's any truly casual clans out there everybody's super passionate about clash of clans and going for those three star attacks in war whenever possible check out the great jump spell right there spanning five different compartments and that is going to make sure that these troops have what i call an exit strategy meaning you can't just worry about getting them into the core if you want that three star you've got to get them out the back door and out to those last defenses on the far side you've got some cleanup archers out there but again the jump spell was absolutely critical and that is going to ensure reaper grabbing the town hall 12 three star which might just be the hardest even three star as we sit right now town hall 9 10 11 and 12 12 v 12 being the hardest especially once we get to maxed out walls and defenses an attack like this is going to be a little bit more rare although it still does happen i have to tell you we'll talk about that in a future episode but for now let's move down to town hall 11 and lp2 demeter and anup so yes you'll notice that the army composition very similar You've got the queen walk starting out and working on that funneling and up trying to get that queen in and making sure that the bowlers are going to head towards the core and again out the back door. So watch for that exit strategy jump spell as I'm telling you right now, the wall wrecker has made such a huge difference in these attacks. It, it does make me a little bit sad for the flying siege machine. I don't even remember its name right now. That's how neglected it is. Battle blimp, I think it is. But nobody ever uses it. Uh, Supercell tried to balance that out by nerfing the wall wrecker a little bit. I feel like maybe the battle blimp needs a buff before players are going to use it. Uh, even in air attacks, you will see players bringing the wall wrecker instead. All right, so the town hall goes down 40%. There it is. There is your exit strategy jump spell once again, spanning five different compartments. So that is well planned out. And that is key to these three-star attacks is, again, late attack planning, working on getting those units out of the core. A great jump spell is going to do the trick. And there you can see Anup's troops, a lot of them wrapping around that right-hand side. There's a P.E.K.K.A. leading the way. The bowlers, the witches continuing to generate skeletons. And although there are a lot of buildings left, a third of this base remains lots of defenses. There are a lot of troops at the bottom of your screen. The Warden's ability, the Queen's ability haven't been used yet. And you'll notice just a level 13 Warden. So not a maxed out army by any means. But Anup doing a great job right here and really mostly out of his control at this point. The Archer Queen still has one healer left as she gets that last air defense out of the way and she can just barely reach the Expo. That is going to be critical right there as that big group around the outside. Watch the way these bowlers work. I mean, I understand why people love to use bowlers. The skipping of the bowlers balls makes such a huge difference as it grabs those far structures. Watch the wizard tower almost get completely annihilated right there behind the cannon. And the bowlers, again, overpowering the rest of this base, 96% just a matter of time before they work their way through the remainder of these buildings and pick up another three star 
for LP2 Demeter. Uh, one bowler a little bit misguided there. Here he goes. But again, not going to be a problem for Anup and LP2 Demeter as another three star gets posted on the war board. And again, you guys, this is super popular. As cool as E Dragons are to watch, to have, especially when they're maxed out, they are not going to be the key war troops right now. It's going to be bowlers and witches at Town Halls 12, 11, and Town Hall 10. As we watch the next replay, you'll notice that there's no Queen Walk involved. We went all the way over to LP5 Titan to watch Robin, a Town Hall 10, go after another Town Hall 10 with, you'll notice, a boosted army. That is why the troop and the spells are in blue. So thanks to a power potion, Robin with his relatively low level heroes, just a 17 king, 23 queen, is going to come in and annihilate this anti three star layout Town Hall 10. Notice he never even had a concern about that Town Hall on the far side of the base. He's going to come in from the opposite end and again, you'll notice the Wall Wrecker instrumental in this attack, you guys. Right now, if you're in a clan that doesn't have somebody that can generate siege machines, you might want to get one. They are making a huge difference. And, I mean, some players are even complaining that it's made War 3 stars, it has made funneling a little bit too easy, as even the nerfed Wall Wreckers are just annihilating. You see that one got through at least three different layers of walls cleared out the core and now you've got plenty of units one more time it even looks similar to the last replay as the units the bulk of the remaining units are coming around the bottom right and the single target inferno tower on the archer queen it doesn't look good but you can see there's a lot of units left and again the dynamic of bowlers protecting witches just works wonders it really does and right here i mean personally i would think this might not be a three star simply because of all the interior defenses being protected by those walls but this just about the ultimate combination for getting over those walls getting through those remaining structures and you can see the far single target inferno is going to be one of the last structures to go down but hey Patience is a virtue right here. The witches staying behind, generating those skeletons. The bowlers looking pretty healthy. And there's nothing left for Robin to do but hope that his boosted army is going to get through. Look at the damage again to the wizard tower as it goes down right there. That being key, the splash damage from the wizard tower, the last splash defense being that mortar is going to get annihilated as well. And now you know there's really no chance of any stoppage right here. Even the Inferno Tower is just going to simply be overwhelmed by bowlers, witches, and their skeletons. Again, watch the bowlers action. They almost take down the single target Inferno. And they're going to skip around the corner here, take out the gold mine, and then, without worrying about any silly walls, smash the last building and pick up another Lost Phoenix 3-star. So there you guys go, attack strategies at Town Halls 10, 11, and 12. Bowlers and Witches seem to be the way to go right now, but let me know. Down in the comments, you know I am always reading them, and I wanted to go over just a couple. I loved Just a Pro saying, ever just like your own comment in order to get the ball rolling? Uh, yeah, I do appreciate that. I also appreciate anybody sending me strange unusual things like this let me know kai's not on that list because i don't know who he is you guys have to tell me these things so i can get them into future videos and then chief gladdy and so many of you wishing me good luck on the quest to 7000 i really appreciate it i know it's going to take a while probably months maybe years but we will get there eventually i'm a t-rex says galadon are you butt hurt over people two starring your base well yes I, I sort of am but you know what the butthurt goes away with comments like this from Anush He says I honestly could watch an hour of Galadon every day. Thank you guys so much Let me tell you the kind and supportive comments are truly appreciated I know that you know Clash of Clans isn't what it used to be as far as millions of people watching But as long as there's a few of you that are gonna hang out with me I will keep making videos and trying to get them out to you every single day if you've got other impressive attack strategies, great base layouts, or simply an idea for a future episode, I would love to hear it. Thank you guys for hanging out. You're the true hashtag Galafam. Have a great day. Be kind to other people and come back again tomorrow for more full attacks. Boring. I 
want to see four starter ticks. Come on, Gally Dalton.